the greatest story that could ever be told in the snake, in the reptile hobby. That gesture made it so we've been friends for, I mean, shit, I'm old now, so 20, 27 years of my life, whatever, we've been friends because of like that. Morning, friends and family. Got really cool video for you guys today. Um, so this is something from the Daytona show that I didn't put in the Daytona video. I wanted to make it its own thing because of how cool the two different moments were. Sorry if I got spaghetti sauce on my face. Uh, these two different moments between two people that had no idea they were being filmed about what they ended up talking about, basically. And I'm going to show the second clip first and the first clip last just because I think it was so amazing that I literally filmed these guys back to back when neither of them knowing that I was filming the other and the story that I got from them was I think the greatest story that could ever be told in the snake, in the reptile hobby, period. Not, not, not their particular story in particular, but just the, the meaning and feel and heart behind the stories. Um, you know, these stories I think exist all over the place within the reptile hobby, and it's the greatest one I think there is. We're here at Dennis McNamara's table. Awesome gentleman. We, I think the very first time I met you, and we did a video actually, was here. Was here. With Macaulay's python. 2018. And they were biting, they were biting you or me during, uh, during that night, how are you? But yeah, I think we were on that side. I remember that very vividly. Yeah, we know. were on that side, yeah. yeah. That's 100% yeah. correct. Yep. That was the first time, I think you had a, Oh, all yeah, the yeah all the python too. Yeah, mass yeah. yeah. This year I had a bad year with the lice and stuff, so you win some, you lose some. I had a Macaulay's python that laid seven clutches in a row, and this year she laid a slug clutch. Well, she was due, so yeah. I'm gonna give her a year off now. Well, De Dennis is gonna show us a couple of his favorite animals he got on his table today. Like, it's hard to beat that. It's like living candy corn, living, it's not even real. It's very much alive. <laughs> very much alive. The good thing about them though is they don't bite. So like, they'll poop on you every once in a while, but these albinos, for whatever reason, I have hypos that bite you. These albinos, see there, goes a little poop. But how can you beat that? That's why I, mean, I keep, ball, I keep ball some of these. Ball pythons hold a lot more still. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I keep some of these every year, because I'm just like, they're just, they get better and better. And the weird part for me too, is I've bred the same female, the same pair, three times. So I've produced like 35 eggs out of her. And I get animals that look different every time, which is weird to me. I think this is overall, to me, the best looking one I've made. So I priced her a little higher, because I was like, if someone wants to buy her, then that, but if not, I'm gonna keep her. Decent? It'll stay still for anything. No, no. It's all right, it worked out. You got it. Albino Honda and Milk Snake. I don't know if we said that or not. Animal number two is going to be a... A blackhead clown, because I just uh, love them. I think this might be the best one that's in shed. As far as single gene clowns, Joe, I think it's hard to beat this as a single gene clown. Like. That's a boy, this is a girl. You can see there's also a lot of variety, like a lot of variation in them. And this clown itself can have a lot of variation, right? You can have a high pattern or a low pattern. And... Yeah, well, if you look at someone, like these are all from the same dad. They just, I produced like a, a few clutches of them and every clutch was different. It was like so much variety in it. And, which, I mean, it could just be due to the girls, I mean, probably, but just the colors. I mean, you also have red gene and rear gene running around in the whole clown and the blackhead stuff, but just like, there's, a, there's a oranges coming out in them, and there's the color and the pattern. They just, I don't know, I just love them. I think they're fantastic. Much easier to film. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Yeah, so when I was 19, I went to a show in Chesapeake, Virginia, and I was looking at some jungle carpet pythons that were, I think, 600 bucks for the pair. And I was a 19-year-old kid. I was there vending, but I had no money. So I went back and forth, and I hadn't met him at that point in time other than at that show. But he was friends with Howie Sherman and Tony Dungara, so he knew them. And so I walked back and forth a few times, and then I was like, man, those are nice snakes. And I went to walk away, and he was like, do you want those? And I was like, I do, but I, I can't afford them. And he's like, you're friends with these guys? And I was like, hey, he's like, hey, just take them. He's like, take them and pay me when you can. He's like, no big deal, just take them when you can. So since that time, I have visited him twice in Texas. I've been to his house in Florida in two different separate locations. We come down here and see each other every year. We go to dinner. It like, that gesture made it so we've been friends for, I mean, shit, I'm old now, 
So 20, 27 years of my life, whatever, we've been friends because of like that, that thing. So it's, you know, it's amazing what gestures can do and what you can get out of it. But it was awesome. And so I appreciate stuff like that to this day. So that was Dennis McNamara, and he was the second person that I talked to, the first person I'm about to play the clip for, and it was just, just beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. Really had to share it with you guys. And uh, while I got you here real quick, big thank you to the channel sponsors, Morph Market, of course, Freedom Breeder, and Redline Shipping uh, for making these videos possible. Redline right now, you can get rewards points when you make shipments there or get supplies and just add those things up and... It's awesome. Morph Market doing all kinds of cool changes and, and doing all kinds of fun stuff and making it a better platform um, for the good of the hobby. And uh, of course, Freedom Breeder like making all this possible. So, all right, here's the first clip. And this is uh, Mr. Craig Trumbauer. <laughs> this man uh, pioneered like, I mean like Trumbauer hypo in bull snakes. Oh, That's it, yeah. Sure. All kinds of cool stuff. I remember my buddy Travis Johnson, he used to live up the way with the, uh, down the street from me up there in California had a lot of this man's lines of animals, so um, we're gonna show a couple snakes here. Whatever you want, whatever your favorite stuff on this, the table, Craig, that's... Um, well, I'll just, I'll give you a little advice. Um, uh, only breed the things you're passionate about. I have an eclectic mix. Um, your passion, if you sell snakes, your passion sells snakes. Uh, so breed what you love. Don't don't breed something with a target to sell it because it's the next best thing, and you'll be successful. But uh, um, I go back before anybody ever sold snakes. We just traded snakes, and uh, um, you either really get that or you don't. A lot of people come come into this and get out of it, um, but it's, it's really about your your passion for those animals and stuff. So breed what you love. Be nice. Be kind to people. Talk to them. Get, get one of those cream of zipper, uh, motley, who cares corn snakes away to that kid that can't afford it. And, uh, and you'll do well. These are great, aren't they? So I gifted Glenn the original zombies and stuff, you know. <laughs> that's what I'm, I know forever he's like, that's what I'm telling people. <laughs> that's, I'd probably sell better if that's true. But, but they, they say they, they go they go Craig, Craig here, this this is your line and they show me some line of bull snake and I go, I've never seen that before in my life. I I'm flattered that you put my name on it, but I don't know where that came from. I see it with some extra I go, I look at the Facebook, I look at something and I go, Trump our line, I go, what? <laughs> I don't even know what this is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought we were going to come and just check out some cool snakes. That was the best advice, I think, that anybody has ever spoken into this camera. I mean, it, there's been some good heartfelt advice. That was, that, that got me, man. That was, um, that, that was some real stuff right there. <laughs> Thank you guys always for watching. I hope you enjoyed that story those stories as much as I did when I was there to hear him. I was actually, I actually teared up after Craig said that because he's just like the heart of what the hobby should be about, in my opinion. So thank you guys for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you on this week's Uncut. Ooh, doing a Thursday night live. Changing to Thursday. Thursday, we're going to do it at four o'clock Pacific time. Hope to see you guys there. If we don't, we'll be sad, but hopefully you can make it. Read what you love. Be nice. Be kind to people. Talk to them. Get, get one of those cream of zipper, uh, motley, who cares corn snakes away to that kid that can't afford it. And, uh, and you'll do well.